comparing DHS versus PFN, imagine you've fractured a bone and your doctor is deciding between two life-changing procedures, one using a metal plate and screws, the other using a long rod inside your bone. But which one is better and why? Today, we're breaking down the battle between dynamic hip screw commonly known as DHS versus proximal femoral nail, commonly known as PFN, two of the most commonly used orthopedic fixation methods. If you're in the implant industry or just curious about how these surgeries work, stick around because the answer might surprise you. Orthopedic fixation refers to the methods used to stabilize and heal broken bones, ensuring they align correctly and function properly post-recovery. Among the myriad of fixation techniques, two stand out. The dynamic hip screw, DHS, and the proximal femoral nail, PFN. In this video, we'll provide a clear and informative comparison between these two methods, helping you understand their applications, benefits, and limitations. First up, the dynamic hip screw or DHS. This system comprises a large screw inserted into the femoral head, connected to a side plate fixed along the femur's shaft with additional screws. This design allows controlled compression at the fracture site, promoting stable healing. The DHS offers several advantages. Stability provides robust fixation, especially beneficial for fractures in the hip and proximal femur. Versatility, suitable for various fracture types, particularly intertrochantric fractures. Biomechanical efficiency allows controlled compression at the fracture site, promoting optimal healing conditions. However, there are some drawbacks. Risk of screw loosening, especially in osteoporotic bones, leading to potential fixation failure. Limited application in unstable fractures. May not be ideal for fractures with significant comminution or reverse obliquity patterns. Surgical technique, sensitivity, requires precise surgical technique to avoid complications like virus collapse or implant cutout. A study published in the Journal of Orthopedics and Traumatology highlighted that while DHS is effective, it may not offer advantages over other methods like intramedullary nails in certain fracture types. Now let's delve into the proximal femoral nail or PFN. This method involves inserting a metal rod or nail into the marrow canal of the femur, secured with locking screws at both ends. This technique stabilizes fractures along the proximal femur. The PFN offers notable benefits, strength and stability, effectively stabilizes fractures, allowing early weight bearing, minimal soft tissue disruption, inserted through small incisions, preserving surrounding tissues and reducing infection risk, versatility in managing complex fractures, suitable for various fracture patterns, including those with comminution or segmental defects. However, potential drawbacks include challenges in fracture site access. Indirect reduction techniques may be required, complicating the procedure. Insertion complications, risks such as anterior knee pain or malalignment can occur post-operatively. Technical demands requires precise surgical technique and experience to minimize complications. Research published in the Journal of Orthopedics and Traumatology indicates that while PFN is effective, it requires careful consideration of the fracture type and patient factors. Let's compare these two fixation methods. Application, DHS is primarily used for stable intertrochanteric fractures, whereas PFN is designed for both stable and unstable intertrochanteric fractures. Surgical approach, DHS requires a larger incision and more soft tissue dissection compared to the minimally invasive approach of the PFN, post-operative recovery. Both methods aim to allow early mobilization, but PFN may facilitate earlier weight bearing due to its biomechanical advantages. Understanding these differences is crucial for selecting the appropriate fixation method based on individual patient needs. In summary, both DHS and PFN are vital tools in orthopedic surgery, each with unique advantages and limitations. The choice between them should be tailored to the patient's specific fracture type, overall health and functional demands. Consulting with a qualified orthopedic surgeon is essential to determine the most appropriate treatment plan. We hope this comparison has provided valuable insights into these orthopedic fixation methods. If you have questions or experiences to share, please leave a comment below. Don't forget to like, subscribe and hit the notification bell for more informative content. Join us to excel in this orthopedic implant industry and 
to know more about the job and career growth which is available in this industry thank you see you again next week